started. want to welcome our visitors that we have with us, uh, just to let you know what's going on. Uh, also, we have a schedule of the, what's going on tonight in the auditorium. If you do not have one, you'll raise your hand. You'll be brought one. We're so glad that uh, it came out tonight in the weather. It's not near as bad as what it was in the days of Noah. So we're in good shape. We've had a very good summer series. Uh, look forward to these every summer. We have some good speakers, some from amongst our brethren right here at uh, Midtown and as well as away. Uh, if you would, bow with me as we enter our worship. Our awesome and righteous Father, hallowed be your holy and precious name. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity we have to gather together with like fellow Christians to lift up our voices and praise to you, come to you in prayer, beseeching you for the blessings and the, uh, all the things that we receive from you on a day-to-day -day basis. And Father, we ask you to be with us as we uh, enter this time of worship, that we might remember that we are here to worship and not to be entertained. And help us to always put you first in our lives and help us to concentrate upon worshiping you this evening. Thankful for the teachers we have that are teaching the little ones. And be with them that they might uh, be able to get across to those little ones what they intend. Father, we thank you most of all for Jesus. In his name we always pray. Amen. Song number 111, one, one, one. We'll be seeing all four verses. Come we that love the Lord, then let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord, then thus around the throne and thus around the throne we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching on the beautiful city of god the hill of zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, or walk the golden streets, or walk the golden streets, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching up to Zion. songs about and every tear be dry we're marching through Emmanuel's ground we're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fair we're rolled on high to fair we're rolled on high we're marching to Zion beautiful beautiful Zion, <laughs> the beautiful city of God. Uh, let's pray together. Our merciful Father in heaven, it's a nice evening you've blessed us with. 
time to be here together. The rain we've been needing coming down today. Thank you for that. We're thankful that you watched over those we prayed for. Rick's cousin Jimmy, pray you bless Rick and his health trouble too. Thank you for answering prayers for Sherry Rosales and pray things are coming her way along just fine. Father, we're here this evening thankful for those who have been leaders in the church. Jesus is our good shepherd. He is the one whose voice we hear, and he is the one we wish to follow and avoid the voice of strangers. We're thankful, Father, for the chief shepherd and for the under shepherds who tend the flock. Thank you for the prayers that have been issued for them and may we continue to have good food to eat as sheep of your flock we're thankful father for those who come before the congregation and lead prayers to pull together our thoughts and invoke your blessings thank you father for them we also have those who call themselves prayer warriors who invoke your blessings even in the prayer closets at home, that you will bless our congregation and take care of those who are carrying burdens. Bless them. We're looking to the future in the congregation, and we think about leadership that may be coming our way in days to come. As we contemplate that, may you shower your blessings on our Bible class teachers who are training youngsters who will retain so much that will help them in life. And these young girls and boys will grow up to be core leaders and helpers in the church. We're thankful for those teachers. And may these youngsters in the Bible studies be fascinated with the things they're learning about you, your power, your creation, and your word and how it blesses their lives. Now, we have young family men in the church who are working hard to rear their youngsters correctly. Young men and the young women who they've married, we're so thankful for them. We see them blossoming into strong leaders in the future. Now, we also, at times, glance back at the history of this church. We're thankful, Father, that you have blessed us with visionary, self-sacrificing members who have brought us to our current happy estate. Without them, we would not be able to enjoy many things, including this building that we are able to worship in. Father, you've also helped us in times where we needed guidance to pilot the straits through adverse winds and hidden reefs. You brought us through safely thus far. Thank you for that. Now, as we consider potential teachers who will help the congregation in the future, feed the flock, may they be coming our way. We have eyes to see them those who will give us healthy food, help bind up the wounds of those who have been injured, and help with church growth. In your providential care, we pray you'll bless us with those. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing all three verses. I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust His holy word. I want to sing and pray and be busy every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray in the vineyard.
I want to live in the way that leads to heaven above, where all is peace and love in the kingdom of the Lord. I will pray, I will pray in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I want to be a worker strong and brave. I want to trust in Jesus' power to save. kingdom of the Lord. I will pray, I will pray in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day in the vineyard. bow with me. Dear Father in heaven, we um, come to you at this point in time and we're so thankful. We want to just give you all the thanks for everything that we have. We know that everything we have comes from you and you've given us more than we need. And with these things you've given us, we can use them to further serve you and do works for you with the many blessings that you've given us. And help us to always have in mind with everything you've given us to give back of our time and of our efforts so that we might put our, our diligence and our determination that we would be able to have these works glorify you and be able to bring souls, lost souls to you and have them to have salvation. Help us to prepare for these works by looking into your word and knowing the ways that we can use your words of wisdom in the ways that we talk to people, in the ways that we deal with each other, and the ways that we plan for things, that everything would be done in a way that was pleasing to you and in a way that was orderly and in a way that would be efficient and be more able to save more souls. We be, we ask that you be with the Bible classes and the Bible teachers and all, all who are students, that we would just learn more each day from your word and, and also in our private Bible studies learn more each day. We ask that you be with us as we look to find opportunities through formal programs and formal efforts and that we would all work together and work in unity so that your name might be glorified and that uh, we might be able to show others that we are Christians and we are your servants and that we want to get out your true message from the true word of God. We also, ask that you be with each one of us. We know there are many here that do many things that are unseen by others, but they work diligently to help encourage others and to help uplift others and to help bring others to study of your word and to ultimately salvation of your word. And we ask that you just be with each one of us as we try to strive in ways that may not be seen, but in ways that will be seen by you, and that we can uplift your name, and that would be for uh, your glory, and would strengthen each one of us in this congregation. We ask at this time that you be with 
all the formal evangelism efforts as we've asked for and just that they would be done in ways that would be able to help others who do not know your true word and that we can help others to learn the, the, the true message of salvation that is so often overlooked in this, in this day and age, in this time. We ask that you be with each one of us and strengthen us as we go forward and, and, and look for opportunities to, to do works in your, in your name. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to sing uh, Wonderful City of God in a minute. I don't have the, the number with me. I didn't bring a songbook along. I, to be honest, I've lost my sight in such a way that I can't even read anymore, so I'm singing by memory only. If um, I haven't speak the wrong word or phrase as I sang this song, if you were to sing what's in the bu book, and if I struggle a little bit, just keep on going. I'll catch up with you. It's uh, all same. Wonderful city of God. <clears throat> There's a wonderful place we call home. Tis a city of glory divine. It's built in the garden of rest. And the beautiful home shall be mine. For oh, the wonderful Eden so blessed. Where Jesus the Master has gone to fast his glorious stone, they bid us so welcome to come. A wonderful city of God, just crossing that beautiful climb, where the angels sweet echo of song in a musical cadence is shine. A wonderful city of in the distance I see There's a mansion prepared over there Yes, a place in that city for me Let us pray together. Our holy, heavenly, righteous Father, we can come before your throne at this time, Father, and we thank you for the many countless blessings that you give us, Father. We know all good things come from you, Father, and you bless us beyond measure, Father. And thank you so much for this congregation that assembles here, Father, for you know, the Christians that are. Uh, wanting to do your will, Father, and we know in this world that when it comes to matter of religion that there is many divisions, Father, that go against what you have commanded. You have said that there is to be no divisions among us, Father, and we pray at this time for the unity of this congregation, Father. We know that Jesus prayed for us to be of one mind. We know that Paul urged us, begged us to walk worthy of that calling for which we were called, Father. And we pray that as your people, that we would strive to live our lives in accordance with thy will. That we may be in unity, not with just one another, Father, but with the church, Father, with this congregation. We pray that there be no divisions among us. Father, we pray that others will see uh, the unity of this congregation, Father, and that we are living our lives in accordance with thy will. We know that we need to be transformed from this world, Father, that if we are 
born to this world and we cannot have unity with you. We cannot have unity uh, in the body, Father. So we pray that we each examine ourselves, that we may look to your word on how we're to live our lives, Father, and as you instructed, that it benefits not only us, Father, but benefits the congregation, benefits the church as a whole. We pray that as our elders shepherd over us, Father, that we make their burden light, Father, that we all strive to have that mind of Christ, Father, that we may love one another, Father, that we may do your will, Father, that we may be the church that Jesus gave his life for, the one true church, Father. And we pray that we know the visions among us. We pray that others in this community will see the love that we have in this congregation for one another, for Christ, and for all those lost souls that are out there, Father. We pray, Father, that <clears throat> we be not like this world, but that we be as you've instructed us in your word. We thank you so much for Christ, for his teaching, for his example, Father, and for his sacrifice. We know that he gave his life for the one church, his church, Father. We pray that we share that message with all those that we come into contact with, Father, and that they may see by our actions in our fellowship and our unity, the true church, Father, and that others will be drawn to you through this, Father. We pray that we be the light in this community that will draw others, Father. And we pray, Father, that all of our members strive for the oneness that's needed, for the oneness that's commanded of us, Father, for the unity that we're instructed to have. We thank you so much for this congregation, Father, and we pray that we all do our part to stay unified, Father, to love one another, to edify the church, Father. We thank you so much for Christ. All these things we pray in his holy name. Amen. Number 572. We've seen the first, second, and fourth verses. <clears throat> There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless waves and the lights and the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of Send the light, send the light. Let us gather 
our jewels, for our crown above sin the lies, sin the lies, sin the lies, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore, sin the lies, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray. Dear God, at this time we focus on prayers with the subject of evangelism in mind. Father, we thank you so much for the work of the church for evangelism. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to, the privilege it is, dear God, to, to share your word with others. Father, what a, what a weight it is on us as the church and understandably so, that responsibility that you have placed on us to share the gospel with this lost and dying world. Father, you do not do it miraculously. You do not do it by means of angels. You do it by means of the church. Father, we thank you so much for entrusting us with the gospel, and we pray to God that we we pray that we do justice to that responsibility. And Father, we think we think of our evangelism model, our house to house evangelism model. We Father, we please be with us as we at the elders' discretion as we implement that piece by piece. Father, we thank you for the progress we have made with the program so far, and we pray that we we only further it. And Father, we pray that all of us as members are involved in the congregational approach. Father, could we all have a part to play and and we and we're very important, each one of us, dear God, into the success of of evangelism for our congregation. Father, please be with us as we as we unfold that that model. And Father, we ask you please be with those who in personal Bible studies with um, with others, Father, please oversee those studies. We pray for um, those who are not Christians. To uh, we pray that they have good and honest hearts. We pray their hearts are receptive, and that they respond to the Word um, when, when they're showing it. Father, we please please be with those studies, and we pray for the success of those studies. And Father, that you would use those studies to to add to the church. Father, we ask you to please be with those of our number who have recently obeyed the gospel. We thank you, dear God, so much for them and for the um, the encouragement that they bring us as a congregation. We pray that we rally around them. We pray that we encourage them and support them. And we pray, dear God, that we lead by example. Father, we thank you so much for them. Please protect them from the world. Please protect them, dear God, from the enemy. We pray, dear God, that we do our part to to keep them in the faith. Father, please be with those uh, the, the students at, at Southwest, and we we thank, dear God, specifically of our own of Kirk. Father, please be with him. We pray that he he works hard, that he does well, like he did last year. Father, thank you so much for him and for his the challenge he took on to go through school and we pray for success. We thank you so much for him. We look forward, dear God, for him finishing school and and um, and being able to help that church that much more with that knowledge. Father, we ask you to please providentially provide us with opportunities in the workplace and amongst friends and families, family as we talk about spiritual things. Father, we pray that they would ask us questions or that we would bring those questions about ourselves and we pray for these opportunities that please dear God providentially put us into contact with those who have good and honest hearts that good soil and we pray that when we do have someone we pray that we're, we're, we're bold enough to share your word with them and Father we ask you to please be with our elders we thank you so much for, for our two elders and for their for their character and for their leadership Please be with them. We pray for their health. We pray for their encouragement. We pray that we never do anything, dear God, to make their their responsibility any more challenging than it already is. Father, they 
we know that they make decisions on behalf of the congregation that they're not ours to make, and nor would we want to make those decisions because of the weight of responsibility that comes from, comes from it. Father, please be with our elders, and we thank you so much, dear God, for them. We pray, dear God, that we follow their lead as they follow your Son. Father, please be with them also as they as we transition during this time. Father, please, um, we ask you, please secure a a good preacher, a good family for us we, that would help us in our efforts with evangelism, a, a family that has a heart for evangelism, and you know, that, that would only further our efforts here at Midtown. Father, please provide our elders with your wisdom as they as they discern and sit down with different men and, and, and choose, um, make the best selection, dear God, with the church and with you in mind. Father, we thank you so much for your word, for the clarity of your word how encouraging your word is and father we thank you for the sacrifice of your son that the means the basis dear god of our relationship with you father again thank you for evangelism we pray for the success of our congregation with evangelism and we we look forward very much to the future in jesus name we pray amen Our next song will be number 500, 500, oh, thy fount of every blessing. We'll sing all three verses. Oh, thy fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy praise. Strains of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love here i raise my ebenezer hither by thy help i've come and i hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of god he to rescue me from danger interpose his precious blood oh to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a better find my wandering heart to thee never let me wander from thee never leave the god i love hear my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy courts above Would you bow with me, please? Almighty God and Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this congregation, for the love we have for one another, for the love we have for you and the truth. Father, at this time we ask you uh, to be with all the teachers. We thank you that we've had the so many teachers during this summer series, some from right here amongst us, and some from a distance. We're thankful for the elders as they planned this, 
as they watch over our souls, as they seek to keep the truth proclaimed from this pulpit. We thank you for the deacons that serve you so well as they go through uh, the year never uh, leaving anything undone that needs to be done. Father, we're thankful for the students that we have here, both the young and the old. We're never too old to learn and never too young to earn, learn. We ask you to be with each of us that we might study each day to learn better how to serve you. We thank you for the fellowship we have through the church. There are many that we would not know that we've grown close to if it was not for the church. Not only in this place, but throughout the world. We meet people continually from other places, and we're so thankful that they, we meet through, your, uh, through the church that you died, your son died for. We thank you for the spouses we have that help us along the way. Without them, we would not be complete. And we lean on them so much for many things. Father, we thank you for your word to guide our steps, that enlighten us as to what needs to be done and how to do it to live a more complete life and one that is in more in step with your word. Father, we ask you to be with us as a congregation that we might always put each other above ourselves. We might all love each other as you have loved us. Father, we're thankful for that unity that we have here at Midtown, for the love we have for each other, for the love we have for you. And it's in Jesus' name we always pray. Amen. That concludes our song and prayer service. At this time we will move into our period of devotion. We start off our devotional. We'll sing song number 727. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. We shall see the King someday. Following this song, our brother Ron White will bring a devotional. And our, then our brother Caleb will be singing our invitational song, Trust and Obey. And then we'll have Brother Job's close us out with a, uh, announcements and a prayer. This time we'll sing number 727, verses 1, 2, and 4. Though the way we journey may be often drear, we shall see the King someday. Blessed morning, clouds will disappear. We shall see the King someday. We shall see the King someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when He shall call His own. We shall see the King someday. After pain and anguish, after toil and care, we shall see the King someday. Through the endless ages, joy and blessing share, we shall see the King someday. We 
shall see the King someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the King someday. There with all the loved ones who have gone before, we shall see the King someday. Sorrow past forever on that peaceful shore, we shall see the King someday. We shall see the King someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. Here's an experiment for you to try after we get out of here. Ask an elderly person here to recall from his or her youth the family telephone number. Or ask a 70-year-old to name one of his elementary school teachers. I went to a VBS before I was age 10 they taught me John 3.16. Do you think I can still quote it? I learned in my youth what kind of fruit was depicted on the curtain in the tabernacle. I can tell you what it is. I have in my head a picture of the candlestick or lampstand in the tabernacle. You know how many lights there were on the top? Things you learn in your youth stick. That's the point. Because of their age, our young people who have been attending the youth summer series will probably remember a great deal of what they were taught. Human memory cells retain a lot of what we learned in our youth. Even though when we get old, we might not remember what happened three weeks ago. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Perhaps that is what connects the youth cells hanging on to what they've learned, and then when you get old, you still remember things. So, I'm saying all that hard work that many of our people here, the ladies, the young men, the young women, all taking turns and helping out in that youth summer series, it was hard work, but it's worth it. All right, adults, do we even remember what the series was we learned out here? <laughs> One another Christianity, remember? Yes. Our behavior with one another in the church actually affects what God thinks of us. So we learn quite a lot. We are members of one another. So we are pulling together as a team. There's synergism that results from working together. We get more done as a group than the sum of our independent efforts. And I thought, no wonder Jesus sent out the disciples two by two. We serve one another. We learn to look out for our brothers and sisters instead of our own personal interests. I have memories from my youth. An old guy used to get up and pray before the church, Lord, wear us out in your service. I always thought that was a quaint way of putting it. But he's talking about helping each other. 
Remember when our former president got shot through his ear flap? There was a fireman in the crowd behind. What did he do? Over protecting those he loved. And so it is in the church. We look out for each other. We shield each other. Church members care for each other. That was another topic. Those members among us who are carrying heavy loads should catch our attention. We need to care for them, empathize with them. And actually, we want to bear some of their burden. I note in a little statement in 3 John, I believe it is, verse 14, the Apostle John said to greet the friends by name. All right, adults, are we able to name all of our members that come out Sunday morning? Greet them by name. Also, we are to encourage each other. I remember a skinny, elderly man with no hair. He used to find something positive to say in my elementary efforts at preaching. He would come out afterward and tell, tell me how he appreciated one of the points that I brought in the lesson. After 50 years, I can still tell you that man's name. Scripture repeatedly tells a Christian, uh, Christians, plural, to greet one another, Romans 16, 16. Now, greeting each other acknowledges the worth of that other person. If somebody doesn't pay you any attention, everybody just walks by and leaves you alone, that has an effect. But if we greet one another, that text says greet one another with a holy kiss, it indicates the person's special status and it makes them feel like they're a person of worth. Next, we are to honor each other. In a courthouse, we are to greet or acknowledge the judge as your honor. Because of the job that the judge undertakes, his or her, is a, this an honorable profession, difficult profession. So we give preference to each other and honor each other. Christians, next, we learn are to forgive one another. It's so important that we won't have our sins forgiven if we can't forgive our brother. And so in that account in Luke chapter 15 of the prodigal son, the story about the father running out to meet him, falling on his neck and weeping. You remember what happened when they got back to the house? They threw a party. They were so happy to be reconciled. And so it is when we are forgiving and somebody has reconciled. Next, be hospitable to each other. Now, that hospitality business is something I don't know, don't know we always understand. Um, I believe it means something greater than frequently eating hamburgers with your buddy. I don't know about Christians from out of town those who could use a place to overnight. What did Lot do whenever he found those visitors coming into the town of Sodom? He took them in. And weren't they glad? Because of their hospitality, they escaped out of Sodom, the fire and brimstone. Receive one another. That was one of the last ones we talked about. In our physical families, we do not get to pick out our brothers and sisters. How about in the spiritual family? We've got some odd ducks in the church, and I'm one of them. Okay? And we have to learn about the peculiarities of each other and learn to love each other. Growling about each other has consequences. I am convinced that sometimes the adults grumping about church members that grumping is heard by the young. And they think it's just not worth messing around with church people. They're all a bunch of knotheads. So I do not believe it's appropriate for us to carry on about how badly we were treated someplace and moan about it. That has consequences. 
Last, be at peace with one another. As much as in you lieth, be at peace with all men. That was our text. But a unilateral by yourself, peace can be tough to maintain. Because sometimes an obnoxious person gets more bold. But Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called sons of God, Matthew 5, verse 9. Well, that's a challenge. I believe uh, as the end thought here, Midtown has been blessed by God because of our perpetual, it seems like, efforts to develop the fruit of the Spirit. We have quite a while talked about not just the people down the block and what they're doing wrong, but looking at ourselves. What are we needing to do to improve our own conduct? And I believe that helps us greatly. And God blesses us for also focusing on that. Because of the presence of loving harmony in this congregation, Jesus blessing our souls so that we might stand without spot and blemish, that has historically attracted people to us. People glorif glorify God for the love that's resulted here, and they want to be a part of the fellowship here. I believe the answer for the question is, why do they want to be a part? We've learned to look out for one another. This evening, if you wish to be a part of the fellowship of Jesus Christ and are new to the area, please ask us about what a wonderful church we have here. If you wish to uh, have prayers of the church, on your behalf, you can let that be known. If you've been hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ, his dying to forgive us of our sins, his resurrection, and wish to be uh, calling on him as Lord, and in repentance, with your faith, be baptized into Christ, we'd be glad to help you do that. Come to the front while we stand and sing if you wish. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sends on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at His feet, or will walk by His side in the way. What He says we will do, where He sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus 
but to trust and obey. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see everybody here this evening. I guess this is the formal end to our uh, special summer series with this uh, prayer and song service, and we uh, are glad that you made it out this evening, and we're thankful for all the participation, too, that we've had throughout the summer months. Uh, we want to welcome any visitors that we have in our midst, and I saw uh, Doyle Brooks, and I, I wouldn't consider you to be a visitor, but but uh, if you haven't met Brother Doyle, I you know, uh, cohorts of, of kids. Ours were in camps together. That's how I got to know him at uh, uh, Riverside, uh, Riverside Corpus. Uh, if you would please fill out a white card, uh, uh, a record of your attendance, that would be uh, appreciated. Uh, we'd ask that you refer to the Midtown Messenger for, uh, for the list of prayers, the prayer list. Uh, some news items here. Lori, uh, Lori Westfall was baptized this past Monday. Uh, keep her in your prayers. Have a game night scheduled for this Friday night, August 30th at the building here at 630. Please bring games and finger foods this Friday night at 630. This next Sunday, we'll begin our new Bible class quarter this coming Sunday, so it'll be a shift in uh, teachers. And also, one final reminder, uh, we'll make sure I get this right, the, there will not be a, a first Sunday potluck luncheon. Uh, we'll have our monthly potluck luncheon on, this, on September 15th, which will uh, be the end of our uh, uh, marriage seminar and uh, so, sermon given by Brother Mike Bonner, and there are flyers in the in the foyer. So no fellowship or early evening service this coming Sunday. However, uh, Michael Waslowski from Northern Oaks Congregation will be delivering the sermon this, com this coming Sunday. Are there any other announcements, anything that need to be known uh, that I may have overlooked? Our next services will be Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Bible class. If you would please join me, we'll close in prayer. Our merciful and gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you giving thanks as always, Father, to be here. Father, we have many things to be thankful for. and Father, we are a, a blessed people. We are truly thankful for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us, Father, especially your Son, Christ. And Father, it's good to come together this midweek. Father, we're so thankful for the lessons of our summer series and all the work that went into those and the preparation and the delivery, Father, of those lessons by the men. And Father, uh, may they be applied to our lives. Uh, the, the, the lessons were designed to be uh, very practical in nature, and Father, they were, and we're so grateful uh, that we can spend this time learning more about your word and how we can apply it to our lives, Father. Lord, we are uh, a thankful people. Father, your Son Christ, the example that he set for us and lived, Father, we are mindful of, Father, as we go about our daily lives, Father, we pray that we may reflect Christ in our lives, Father, that others may see us as Christians, Lord, and we know that there are distractions and trials, and Father, we are so thankful that we have we have Christ as our Savior, Father, and, and the, the eternal hope for salvation. Father, as we leave this place, we ask that you be with us, be with our guests and visitors as they travel. Be with those who are sick of our number too, Father. Help us gather back when it's uh, at the next appointed time. And it's in your Son's name that we pray and give you the praise. Amen.